Hey guys, welcome back. We've got another install video for you. It's uh, the Rough Country Dual Steering Stabilizer for the JLJK with the N3 shocks. Um, personally, I love it. I've ran it now on my JT. I've ran it on my old JK. Tonight we're going to be putting it on uh, Bell, the blue uh, JL. So, there's not a lot to say about it. It's a steering stabilizer. It's going to help with your bump steer. It's going to help with that traditional straight axle uh, float, if you will. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So, this is actually the fifth one that we've actually been through together because we had both JKs oh, and yeah, both, both JKs. JTs. We've both had this same one, and it's the N3 Rough Country. So they also have the V2, and I was going to talk about that real quick because this is kind of a review video because, again, this is the fifth one that we've put on. So the V2 versus the N3, from everything that I've looked up, the V2 is actually a performance shock absorber. So, in all technicality, this is a performance uh, steering stabilizer, even though that really isn't a thing. Um, but again, we got the N3s, which are the stock, closer to stock, or more like a, uh, a, a premium ride, is what, they, is what they actually called it. Um, so, it is the cheaper of the two. I feel it does just the same, because as a steering stabilizer, you have a 50-50 move on your shock absorber. Right. So it's going to have the same same amount of force going in as it is coming out. Unlike an actual shock that holds the suspension, it's actually got different ratios. And it depends on the manufacturer, all that. I'm not going into it. But it actually has more of a uh, resistance going down than it does going up. Right. So it's... Uh... Like I said, I don't know all the ratios. But... Plunge and rebound or something to that effect. Yeah. Now, yeah. I will say this. Since I've been off-roading, we'll use that term. <laughs> well, I started out in the mud as a teenager in the military. I went to Colorado, got my first Jeep there, uh, my first TJ, and that was rocks. I have used Falcon, I have used uh, Fox, and I've used Rough Country. I'm not the most experienced guy in the world never going to try and sell it that way at least not with off-roading <laughs> but i can't tell a difference i can't like he said it's a 50 50 shock it's not it helps it now one thing i will say about a steering stabilizer if you already have a issue yes like i do right now with my jt i have steering issues they're notorious for the steering box and the drag link and uh, tie rods. Mm -hmm. And we've got videos coming up of two different styles of that. Mm -hmm. uh, one for the JL. Uh, one system we're using on the JL. I'm using a different system on my JT. But if you already have an issue, all it's going to do is hide the issue for a little while. The parts are going to wear out relatively quick, and then you're going to be back in the same boat. So if you're already having an issue with your steering, check your tie rods, check your ball joints before you just, oh, I need a new steering stabilizer. Check them. If they're great, put a steering stabilizer on, and it will help. But please don't ma uh, mask the problem by throwing on something because... If you've ever broken a ball joint or a tie rod going down the road, I promise it sucks. you'll never, ever want to make that mistake again. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's, that's going to say that too. Because if you're having a problem, this will mask it. And it will make everything so much better, but only for a short period of time because all you're going to do is wear out this shock. And that's actually what's going on with the JL. We've got to be driving for a little bit, so we put that back on or put the new one on. The next week that we're down here is probably when we're going to try to do all the steering and stuff. So, yeah, all the rest of it. We've, we've got tie rods to replace. We have a heavy-duty um, steering to put in and a uh, 
the sector shaft bracket. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> let's give you just a little bit of a peek at what's coming. So on the JL, we're going to be running the uh, Synergy uh, sector shaft and track bar uh, reinforcement bracket. And on the JL, we'll be running, we're installing the steel. Yours is steel, right? Yeah, it's a steel heavy. <coughs> it's the Rock Jock. Okay, so the Rock Jock, he, on their JL, they're going to be running the steel version, upgraded heavy duty uh, tie rod and drag link. On my JT, we're going to still be running the Synergy uh, sector shaft track bar and uh, gearbox reinforcement. However, I'm running the aluminum heavy duty Rusty's off-road uh, track bar and, or I'm sorry, drag link and tie rods. They both run about the same price. Honestly, for, I paid just about $1,000 with shipping and taxes and all that good stuff uh, for this bracket and my steering upgrades. He in turn paid roughly the same amount. So this is gonna be a great way for us to do a review further down the road of, hey, this is how the steel held up, this is how the aluminum's holding up, and give you guys a view six, eight months down the road after we install hey, this is what's going on now. Are we happy with our investments? Do we wish we would have went the other way? Um, whatever. So be on the lookout for that video. It should be within the next two videos coming. Hopefully. Depending, well, on, depending on editing, it'll be either the one after this one or the one maybe two after this one. Yeah, and depending on what we got to do at the house, or your house. Oh, that's true. We got to do some <laughs> things at the house. So, but... Yeah, um, we'll see how it goes. Let's go ahead and start working on getting this getting this on. Um, like I said, this particular video is the Rough Country dual steering stabilizer for the 2019 Jeep JL. So let's take a look at what we've got and uh, crawl up underneath it. All right, let's get her done. Let's get her done. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so the first thing we gotta do is actually just remove this old one. If I'm not mistaken, we're gonna be yep, number 18s. Alright, that thing's out of the way. So now we've got to remove this bracket, which is the factory bracket. And Rev Country wants you to pull off the uh, other factory bracket, but you actually have to drop the tie rod in order to pull that bracket off because the bolts would hit the top or the bottom of the uh, drag link. So we're not actually going to take that off. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, so we're just going to take this bracket off. And I do believe that one is the 13. All right, you guys, apparently I had a little technical difficulty. So when I turned the camera off, it switched over to photo mode. So the next couple videos I tried to shoot were actually just photos. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Um, however, I did get pictures. So that being said, um, you remove the old bracket by taking off the three bolts that are on there. But make sure you save those three bolts. Um, when you go to place the new bracket on, it will slit, sit slightly right towards the actual differential. So, the factory bolt goes in the bottom hole. The U-bolt goes around the axle right next to the diff. And then the two new bolts go on the top, um, just like shown. Next, we've got to do the outer drag link brackets. These get a little bit complicated when trying to figure out which side, which up, down, left, right, all that good stuff. Nonetheless, the U-bolts should go 
towards the front, means the nuts are on the back side of it towards the back of the Jeep. Um, and then the shock bolt should be sitting on top of the drag link pointed towards – or the bracket should be pointed towards the middle, towards the uh, axle bracket. Um, that said, make sure you put the shock bolt in the bracket before you put it on top of the drag link and put the U-bolts in. Because once you get the U-bolts on there and started, you can't get that bolt in there. Once you've got all that situated, um, make sure you leave them just slightly loose. That way, once you get the shocks on there, you can actually get it lined up a little bit better before you tighten everything down super tight. So next, we'll actually do just a quick time lapse of us putting on the rest of the brackets and then starting to line everything up. All right. All right, guys, so we've got the uh, brackets up there. We've brought the shocks up here just to kind of start getting them aligned. We actually found it's easier to drop the bolts from the top and then put the nuts in from the bottom. And what that does is that allows you to actually reach on the other side of the tra or the drag link here. Um, but all you got to do is just tighten them up. And we're just going to kind of fit them in there loosely just to see how well they fit. Er All right, you guys, it's kind of tight in here, but this is what I'm going to try to show you. Um, right in here, like I said, you just got that plate on there on the uh, drag link, and it connects up right here and then goes across. And like I said, just make sure that your track bar is, or your shocks are straight. And then once you get them straight and they all look good, make sure you got everything tightened. And then double check and tighten again. All right, guys, we got most of it done. I just got to add the last 10 horsepower on and then we'll be ready to go. Hey, every sticker is five horsepower. Everybody knows that. All right, guys. So this is what it looks like. We've got each bracket on either end. And it just goes all the way across. We got the middle bracket put together with the little protector plate up here. We've got everything tightened up and all the way over to that side. So that, in a nutshell, is the uh, Rough Countries in, yeah, we got the N3's dual steering stabilizer. All right, guys. So it's on. <laughs> there was some mistakes made uh, camera-wise and... Uh, you know, we got some tools stuck that you unfortunately didn't get to see because we're still learning how to operate a GoPro, evidently. My GoPro likes to revert back to pictures, so we got all kinds of pictures for you to see. <laughs> but, uh... Not near as many videos. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, we'll, fi we'll figure something out. I'll try. I'll, you'll see. It'll be edited before this, but nonetheless. <laughs> so, yeah. As we had talked about, it, it's a real simple thing. It, it took us 35 minutes, maybe. And that was with jacking with a camera and getting a tool unstuck. Yeah. That I, I did it. My fault. So when you're working in a tight space, don't use a ratchet wrench. <laughs> because you might loosen it and not be able to get it loose or get it back off and have to take other things apart like we did. We had to take apart one end of the track bar to lift it up to get the... Uh, Bolt out. The good part about that was is we found out the track bar was loose and that was part of our problem. Yeah. A clunk when she turns and couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. Went to loosen the track bar and come to find out it was loose. It was already loose. So um, going along with that, make sure um, you're checking your stuff. She just had a girls off-road weekend about a week ago and more than likely that trip is what loosened it loosened yeah um after 
According to Rough Country, it's actually a good idea to tighten everything or at least check it every, after 500 miles. And that goes for anything that we've done. You always a good idea after 500 miles, always go back underneath there and check it, make sure it's tight. Yeah, for me, I go back, I do what, you know, I call it a nut and bolt. Mm -hmm. um, you put a paint marker on it. When you put it on, that's great. But I still go back and even though my lines may still be lined up, I'll, after I get everything cleaned out and under it and whatnot, I go back under it with a ratchet and a wrench and just hit everything again. It don't hurt. I also go through a lot of Loctite because sometimes I get lazy and forget. So, and especially in the winter when it's super cold and I can't get in the garage where it's halfway warm, I really don't want to be under it. So, you know, me... Like, when I put my lift on, I honestly checked mine about every week. That's me. I get a little anal retentive about that. Because when we did my JK, <laughs> I drove it 350 miles the next day and had a bolt walk out on me and my on my rear track bar. And my axle decided it wanted to come out and say hello. So, me and my... Two boys were with me, and we had to rock it around about every 20 miles. Luckily, well, no, it wasn't that far. It was probably about every five miles. Luckily, it was all, it fell out right as soon as we hit the gravel road to my parents' house. <laughs> so we only had to go about seven miles before <laughs> we got someplace where we could stop and go into town and get a bolt. <laughs> but it's important to check your stuff. It is. It's very important. So... But other than that, I think it turned out just fine. Oh, yeah. We had a few little issues, whatever. Um, but look forward look forward to the steering. We talked about that before we're doing it. We're going to do the next couple videos getting all the other steering upgraded. So make sure you just keep an eye out for that. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. So uh, hopefully you guys are liking what you're seeing. Um, yeah. We're two months in now. Probably six videos by now. Yeah. Something like that. So. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it, it all it's all a blur <laughs> but again i hope you guys are liking it um have a good weekend guys get out there and do something go see the country off-road if you can if you can't work on something do something yep all right i think that's gonna do it for this week we will see you next friday and have a good weekend bye later. guys later guys